Good morning, and welcome to another edition of Maine Talk, Conversations About Hair. I'm your host, Deshaun Bullard. Maine Talk is a radio talk show where all we do is talk about hair. Hair is such a big part of what we do in the African-American community, and the reason we wanted to have this show is because no one is talking about it. The Black Salon has always been a pillar in the black community. The first woman self-made millionaire, Annie Turnbull, Annie Turnbull Malone and Madam C.J. Walker both made millions in the beauty industry. During the Civil Rights Movement, the black salons were used as a meeting place for activities because unlike other places such as the church or other places, it was less, uh, less of a visible institution within the community. Today's topic is the devaluation of the black hairstylist. People used to come to the salon every week to get their hair done. And when they came to the salon, they really valued what the hairstylist had to say about their hair, to keep their hair healthy, to treat it. But today, the black hairstylist is really almost like a non-factor. People tell the hairstylist to look at YouTube or people are listening to bloggers on what to do with their hair. So today we want to have this conversation about why is the black stylist becoming a non-factor? Why are they so devalued? And today we have sitting with us Connie Judge, who is the president, CEO, one of the leaders in the industry. She owns the National Trichology Institute here in Atlanta. So Connie, say hello to everybody. Good morning. How are you doing today? I'm fantastic. I'm excited about being here. Good, good. And of course we have our sidekick, Keisha. Say hey, Keisha. Hello, everyone. Who's with us each and every week as we discuss these hot topics as it relates to hair in our community. So let's start the conversation, guys. Why is it that you think that hairstylists are becoming or have, you know, are looking, why why are we so devalued? Deshaun, you, you, you bring forth a very interesting topic, and I'm privileged, first of all, to have this dialogue uh, with you and also to talk to those who are listening to the show today. As an entrepreneur myself and have been in the beauty industry for 30 years this year, I uh, stood behind the chair for 17 of those years, and now I've been teaching for many, many years I've seen the devaluation over the last 20 years of our industry basically starting to crumble and go back the other way. I think if we really want to get to the heart of the matter, we've got to talk about professionalism. Mm -hmm. We've got to talk about ethics. We've got to talk about uh, the knowledge that our styluses uh, are obtaining today. If we compared the knowledge today to what we gained, uh, much like yourself many years ago, you'll see that even... The education is not as phenomenal as it once was Mm -hmm. in the day. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's basically most of the devaluation when it comes to professionalism on our side. Uh, Another fact, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment, but on the other side of that, uh, we also have to consider that consumers are able to purchase the same products that licensed cosmetologists are able to purchase. And that's a big factor. Exactly. And I think that's where we've got to hone in at and begin to do something to change that part of our industry to bring back to the industry what our job really is all about. Right. So do you think that it's the lack of education amongst the black stylists that is, uh, you know, that consumers are looking at us and saying this is something that we could do at home ourselves? Because, of course, when we look at skill and talent, you can have your cousin, your niece, or uh, someone in the community that is doing hair in their kitchen that they are skilled. However, when it comes to hair care, that is something totally, totally different. But our customers and our clients are sitting in these kitchens getting their hair done by their cousins and then coming into the salon and arguing to a point that, I mean, really, that their cousin is just as good as we are. Well, let's address that from another perspective. First of all, they're not skilled. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, they're kitchen titian beauticians. Right, exactly. And, you know, I wrote that book many years ago. Uh, we came up in the likes of our aunties and our cousins all doing our hair in the kitchen at home. 
Uh, but times have changed. Things have changed. And certainly there is uh, some quality education out there in some of the beauty schools. But when you look at what's happening, I think that the industry has changed in that the products is where where your consumers can go and buy that product and they can go home. I think that's where we've lacked uh, the integrity of our industry, if, if, we, if you could say it like that. The integrity has been lost. Therefore, now consumers are now competing with the skilled, licensed cosmetologists. These people are not skilled. They have talent. Right. But they're not skilled. But that brings me to a point. Yeah, they that have talent. Something that we were talking about, Keisha. Um, most, I think most consumers don't understand what licensed cosmetologists have to go through and what they have to learn in the beauty schools. When I was in school, and I'm sure when you guys went to school, we have to learn, learn about the bones of the face, the bones of the neck, primary colors, tertiary colors, secondary colors, the medulla, the cortex, the cuticle. I think that the general public don't really understand what we have to go through in order to become licensed. And, of course, with, with uh, new reality shows on such as, you know, Houston Beauty on the OWN Network that just really made a mockery of what is happening today in the beauty schools, it seems as though we come out of school uh, and we don't know anything. What, what, what you have to say about but that? But a lot of the, the Houston Beauty, a lot of that really is going on. In the schools. In the schools. And the instructors are not training professionalism, nor are they, I mean, it, the school itself is not professional. I think the the professionalism should start in the school. They're servicing clients. People are coming in. I mean, the cosmetology schools are flooded right. with people going in and get their hair done. But, you know, the, the training starts then. So the professionalism should be how they're servicing the clients in the schools at that time that they're not teaching it. And then they're just passing them through because I mean, Hey, cosmetology schools are charging 20,000 now. They are, you right. know, it's and so it's, yes, it's a money maker. It's and so it's business. a business more than training It's business. So they got to push those students out because it's a lot of students are on waiting lists, waiting to get in. So they're going to push you out. You know, even if you can't do a roller set, you know, I was, you know, um, I did the rating for state board. And I had to stop because the way they train us is, you know, is yes, they did it. No, they didn't. And clearly, you know, it's not our job to say, no, she needs to go back to school, you know. And it was maybe 25, 30 people at one time, you know, uh, taking their practical and maybe 10 looked like they knew what they were doing, you know. And, you know, because some of them I wanted to say, get out. Right. right go home. Right. Because this is not for you. So then you know. this goes back to us educating the consumers why we wanted to have this show. So what we're going to do is talk about what should consumers look for when they go into a salon and they are selecting a stylist to service them. What should they look for? We'll come back and have more conversations with that on Main Talk Conversations about hair with your host, Deshaun Bullard. Hey, what's wrong? Man, my hair is just falling out. You should try this product my wife found in a hair magazine because she was going through the same thing. Her hair was thinning and breaking, but now it's growing like crazy. It's all thick and healthy, too. What's the name of it? It's Neurotress. Neurotress? That's right, Neurotress. She's so hooked on it, even I can tell you where to get it from. Call 1-888-489-0179. Pick it up at your local beauty supply store or order online at Neurotress.com. I can't wait to go to the store. Hand me the phone. I'm about to call and place my order right now. What's the number again? 1-888-489-0179. That's one 888 888-489-0179 or remember you can just go online to Neurotress.com that's N-O-U-R-I-T-R-E-S-S dot com hey thanks for the info okay we're back with juicy conversations about the devaluation of the black hairstylist what should consumers look for when they are looking for a new hairstylist you know, right now people go online and they're trying to find out how to keep their hair healthy. Um, you can find salons online. What should these customers look for? You know, I always tell customers the first thing they have to look for when they walk through the door of a salon is what? The license on the wall. Mm -hmm. Because there are so many, quote unquote, people in the salons styling hair who are not licensed. 
I think that is the number one problem that we say that hairstylists are devalued and we don't want to listen to what the stylist says, but the salons are struggling. So therefore they hire or rent their chairs to someone who is unlicensed, which is giving the whole community of hairstylists a bad rap. What are some other things that you guys think that they should look for when they are talking to a stylist or are vetting a stylist to become their, you know, personal care professional? Deshaun, you're really talking deep this morning, so let's <laughs> let's go deeper. Let's be transparent with our, our listening audience. First of all, let's just go back to a simple cash register. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. Because we have these mom and pop shops that are being operated, and you don't even see a cash register. This girl has a cash flow business where, first of all, she just takes the cash and put it in her pocket. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That sends the sign that she's probably not even paying taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's go <laughs> right. to another part of that, and let's just say we're looking for professionalism when we walk in the door. How are you being greeted as a client? Is she bringing forth professionalism? The other thing is, let's look at her appearance. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's look at what she looks like. Mm -hmm. Let's look at her hair first mm -hmm. and see mm -hmm. if her hair looks the part. Right. Because I firmly believe that a licensed cosmetologist should demonstrate, should practice, should look like, act like, talk like, walk like, everything that represents beauty and professionalism. Right. Because that's what you're selling. She is the best seller right. in her business and in her establishment. Right. And so she certainly has to look the part and talk the part. So I think that's the first thing. Right. Also, I want to make sure that I'm picking a stylist that has not overbooked and I'm not sitting in a salon all day. That is a notorious problem in the beauty but, salon. But it's accepted. It, it, it's, it, accepted. It, it's accepted. It's because they accept it. It's the accepted. clients are now accepting it. But I mm -hmm. think that's because some of them are desperate you know, for professional hair care services, and they find something that they can pretty much get along with, and they go there. But your lady who works in corporate America, number one, does not have time to pay her and wait all day. Right. Number two, she does not have time to tell another lady's children to sit down in the beauty salon. That's Why right. are we accepting kids and oh diaper God. bags and strollers in the salon? That's part of the devaluing that we're seeing in these salons. And so I think that the problem goes much deeper. I think it goes to a mindset and a culture and what we're willing to accept. Exactly. And, and as it relates to the customer, the reason why they accept it is because let's talk about pricing, ladies. Hmm. Today, a stylist who charges $25 for a shampoo and style can't really survive. She can't even meet her own needs at home. When they were charging $25 for a shampoo and style when I was in high school, and that was back in the 80s. But the so these salons are booked with people accepting these type of unprofessionalisms because they don't want to come into a salon that is professional and pay $50 to $60 for a shampoo without arguing the stylist down about why are they charging so much. So therefore, the consumers, are we saying that the consumers accept the, profession, the unprofessionalism because they could pay less? Because that's, that's what I see. But if she's charging or he is charging $25, that's letting you know that they're not using professional products. Exactly. Because if a, 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 a professional hairstylist is spending money on professional shampoos, conditioners, and products, so they have to charge to even make their money back. Mm -hmm. So if they're charging twenty five dollars, I'm pretty sure they're using ten dollar shampoo in your head. That I mean that's I mean less than ten dollar shampoo. Yeah. Five dollar shampoo. Swallow. They're going to the beauty supply store, like Connie said earlier, purchasing a bucket of relaxer for $7 mm -hmm. versus purchasing a professional brand of relaxer that costs five times more, that has all of the uh, different oils and emollients that it has or needs to keep the hair healthy. But the customers, are they don't really care. And one thing I do say and I can vouch for is that in this culture that we live in, we have levels of everything, just like you may have your uh, your your flea markets. May people may go to the you know flea market and buy their clothes, or people may go to the uh, what is it the what's the shop where people like hand me downs. What's that called? Uh, second, the second hand, the second hand, the Goodwill. Goodwill. They may go to the Goodwill and purchase their clothes. Some people may go to a you know a TG, TJ Maxx, or they may go to some people may go to Macy's. Some people may go to Lord and Taylor's, and then some of us decide that we're going to go to the Neiman Marcus. There are different levels of everything. So I think that with that in mind, it's no difference in the beauty industry. In the beauty industry, we do 
we and we will have those salons that allow kids to come in. They run by very young people who have no business skill. They came straight out of high school, went to beauty school, and somebody told them they can own their own salon or their own shop, quote unquote. And then because they have no training and no skill, the salon is just run any kind of way. Kids are in there. I've seen people push big strollers into the salon. And I was always criticized in my salon uh, for not allowing children to come into the salon. Me too. But most people mm-hmm. don't understand that is a hazard. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Let, let's, let's bring a game changer to this whole conversation, Deshaun. When you talk about the cost of what you're spending in terms of dollars and cents, First of all, any woman in her right mind does not put her hair on sale. Right. <laughs> okay, let's just be real that's about it. Right. That's any woman in her right mind. You mean the, the hair on her would head. Not, exactly. Right. Her own personal hair own that personal grew hair. through her scalp, right. not the hair she bought from right. down on the corner. Right. Okay? right, But any woman in her right mind would not put her hair on sale. So let's speak to that audience of women. Right. Because there are some women like yourself and myself and like our other speaker here who will not. We refuse to put our hair on sale. This is our glory. Yes. If we go really deep with that, let's speak to this audience and let's tell the audience what that hair was put on your head for. Mm. It is a covering. covering. All right. I knew you were it is a protector. It is a fence. It is a speaker for the body that says, rather than your heart go, I'll go. Rather than your liver go, I'll go. Rather than your kidneys go, I'll go. The hair speaks for what we cannot see that's happening to the internal issues that we may be facing inside of our bodies. And so why would I put my hair on sale? Why would I take my hair to a stylist who, number one, is going to put soap and lye on my head? Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, That's she doesn't right. care about what she uses on me. That means she don't care about me. Right. She cares more about the dollar right. that she's going to make than about my hair and my well-being because my hair is a representation of who I really am, and it has a lot to do with my personality, with my character. It has a lot to do with how I feel about myself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It has a lot to do with my self-esteem. Amen. Women really take pride in their hair. You understand what I'm in saying? Their, in their, okay, they and do their take pride personal in their hair. personal hair. I'm right, about to get up and do the holy dance. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think, oh my God. I think there's a clear message here <laughs> that we need to tell our listening audience Please don't put your hair on sale. Right. Don't allow that stylist to run you a ten dollar deal and you run down there and you pick it up because your money may be tight. It would be better for you to buy retail from your stylist who is trained professionally to show you what to do at home when you cannot go back to the salon for a weekly visit, rather than you going down changing salons because this girl is running a quick sew in weave or a promotion for twenty five bucks. Who who does that? Right. But but you you have really sparked something because I'm sitting over here moving in my chair. Hair. So are you saying that women put their hair on sale when they buy weave? Absolutely. Because. Absolutely. Because with this whole weave generation that we are in, that women are putting their hair on sale every day when they put something foreign in their Absolutely. hair. Absolutely. Now we and can go don't really take, deep and to don't with that. take it out Absolutely. for 365 days Absolutely. out of the year. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, what has happened even with the weave industry, we're talking about a trillion dollar business here. Okay? That That's a money maker. It's a game changer. So many people are wearing weave. Now you can stand 10 women up and you will actually see out of 10 women standing before you, you would have 9 out of 10 wearing weave in their head. That's right. That's and right. that's how serious it is with this generation, which means we've now not only devalued the professionalism in the industry, but we've also devalued what God gave us. That's right. But I think we they come from the, the society with the weave. It does. Women are, and the young girls are wearing weave is because that's what everybody is telling them. You should have long hair. You can't walk around. I mean, these girls don't, you know, elementary school you Middle know, school. are embarrassed. Yeah, and they're embarrassed because their hair is short. Hair that's doesn't because make they're you. they're not being educated. That's But that's a television, though. Right. And all you I see agree. is women with long hair. You know, nobody is wearing short hair, you know, on television anymore. It's well, all long hair. Well, let's speak hair. to long, though, because if we look at that from a spiritual principle, the Bible speaks about the longevity and not the length, but having hair on your head all the days of your life. So... That's an important thing to consider. And I think there needs to be more education about this weave deal and what's really going on in the marketplace. There's some frightening things that's happening behind that. And yes, we, we have are. a hair loss epidemic that has ultimately invaded our country right now, mm-hmm. uh, looking at what's happening. And when we talk about black, it is the black consumers who are wearing it more than anyone else. That is mm-hmm. right. That As is a right. race of people. This is some juicy conversation. That is the reason why I started the product line, Nurturist Hair Products, uh, 
to help women who are in trauma because women are losing their hair at a fast rate. But that's another show. But we're going to come back and we're going to go to commercial but, uh, and, have, and continue this conversation about why are people not really listening to our black stylists in the salon anymore. I'm your host, Deshaun Bullard. We'll be right back with more conversations about hair with Main Talk. Are you experiencing hair thinning, hair shedding, hair breakage, or hair loss? The Nortress Perfect Hair Vitamins Plus is for you. Most people don't understand that in order to achieve thick, full, healthy hair, it must be done internally. Nortress Perfect Hair Vitamins are packed with vitamins, minerals, amino acids, biotin, and folic acid, which feeds the hair follicle from the inside and makes the hair longer, stronger, and fuller as it grows out from the hair follicle out to the scalp. So if you desire longer, stronger, faster growing, thicker, healthier hair, then order Nortress Perfect Hair Vitamins or Nortress Perfect Hair Vitamins Plus today. Call 1-888-489-0179. That's 1-888-489-0179. 489-0179 or online at noratress.com. That's N-O-U-R-I-T-R-E-S-S dot com. We're back with more hot conversations about hair with Deshaun, the hair coach on Main Talk, conversations about hair. Now, ladies, we are talking today about the devaluation of the black hairstylists in the African-American community. Now, I want to switch this conversation up just a uh, a little bit more as we are moving into our last part of this conversation. Um, any movie or any television show that depicts a black stylist has always been negative. Number one, Shanene on Martin. Do y'all remember Shanene? Yes. Shanene was a hairstylist, and we already know what that looked like. Then we have shows like Beauty Shop, Barbershop, but every depiction Baps. of a b- BAPS, exactly of a black stylist is negative. So how do we move at this point because we are devalued because of the images that are put forth to us in society about what a black stylist look like, what a black stylist acts like, but on our counterparts, they are the professionals. They can live in the big houses and they get, you know, this and they're that. Even when we look at Tabitha from Tabitha Salon Takeover, You know, she is from another country, but the view of who she is was a business professional that helps salons get in shape. But when it comes to someone that is African-American, we just looked at as she just doing hair. Mm -hmm. How do we how are we going to move past this negative image that we have in our community? Education. Mm -hmm. Education is the key to Sean. And let's just talk really seriously about that. Uh, Our women, first of all, need to be educated on what is professionalism, what's accepted, and what's not acceptable. Uh, We have allowed so much to change our industry. Let's go back from the very beginning of our show today when we talked about the era that you and I came from and perhaps even our other speaker where she may have come from in the timelines of what we learn and how when I entered into beauty school in 1982, I'm going to tell my age in just a few minutes, When I entered into beauty school, first of all, we had to wear uniform shoes, Mm -hmm. white uniforms in beauty school. We were taught Mm -hmm. to say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. We were taught professionalism. We were at the hype of our game and being very professional. Over the years, that situation started to change because of school owners not taking a true initiative to educate their students. They began to look at this more as a business to make money as opposed to a business to raise up educated and professional people. And so I think part of the problem lies with the school owner themselves, Mm -hmm. that they need to go back and be educated themselves about how they should run a professional school to train our students to come out properly. And so thus now we see an era of young people who are caught up in every generation of weave, color, uh, the relaxers, they're caught up in everything that looks glamorous, That's right. but nothing that looks professional or really beautiful. And so in our race, that is a serious problem. And I, and I want to say it is really ignorancy. It is. And that needs to change. It and is. we who are, 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 I would say, veterans in the industry need to start to adopt some of these young people and begin to mentor them and coach them and help to develop them to become better at professional ethics. That I mean, that's true. One of... Uh We had one stylist to hit us on Facebook. Um, And for those who are listening, our Facebook page is uh, Main Talk Radio. 
And she said that one of the reasons and one of the big reasons that the industry is changing and that stylists are being devalued is because, like Keisha said, the students who are coming out of school, they have not been trained properly. They don't know how to price. And so now when you look around, you have $50 weave shops that customers are going to. They're spending $50 for a weave. And it's kind of hard for her, she said, as a stylist to be able to compete with the $50 weave. And my response to her was that we don't charge $50 where we are. We service professional women, but we also make sure that we have an environment in our salon that is conducive for those clients to be able to come in and receive a professional service. Because if I come into a salon where there's children running around, where the stylists have the customers waiting in the lobby all day, of course, without any communication, the music is unprofessional, it's loud, they're cussing, they're talking about inappropriate, I mean, they're inappropriate lyrics on the radio, then you are not going to receive the type of money that you could receive on a service. Because, again, they're looking at you like, I'm not coming in here for this. So what we have to do is, like Keisha said, look back at the cosmetologists, those who are coming out of school, and make a change. Mm -hmm. We have to make a change mm -hmm. because it's getting really, really, really bad out here. And we just want to make sure that the stylists, who, the clients who are coming into these salons are getting the best care for their hair. Because like Connie said, people's hair are coming out in record numbers. Yes, and we started a campaign called I'm Wearing My Own Hair, Are You? That's, it's kind of a little hard campaign, but nevertheless, we are trying to do that because the only way that we are going to be able to wear our own hair is we are going to have to do what? We are going to have to have professionals who are going to class, getting educated about the latest and greatest in hair technology so that we could be able to service these clients. Deshaun, if we could close with a couple of key points that may be helpful for your listening audience and for those stylists who are discouraged, certainly there are a lot of them that are discouraged mm -hmm. because of what they see that's going on down the street. Let's give three key points that a stylist should do to remain with integrity and not be devalued. Number one, she needs to check up from the neck of herself. Mm -hmm. She needs to make sure that she maintains a sense of integrity. Don't lower her standards or her prices because of what someone is doing down the street. If she looks apart, act apart, walk apart, run a professional establishment, getting people in and out on time, people will pay you mm -hmm. for that level of integrity and respect because when you respect their time, you have it made in the business. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to continue this conversation. We're going to end this week, but Connie, I'm going to ask you to come back next week so that we can continue this conversation, this hot conversation on the devaluation of the black stylist. We're going to continue this conversation next week. We don't have enough time this week, but we will continue it next week. We thank all of those who are listening to Main Talk Conversations About Hair. I'm your host, Deshaun Bullard, the hair coach. You can find out more about our show on Facebook. Uh, go to Main Talk Radio. You can visit my personal website, DeshaunBullard.com. And you can find out more information about our wonderful products, Nurturist Hair Products that helps all women who are looking to have healthy hair at www.nurritress.com. That's N-O-U-R-I-T-R-E-S-S. -S.